Hello? Hello. Am I speaking with Professor Alter? Uh, yes, yes, you are. Just w- woken up. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Adam Smith. I'm calling from NobelPrize.org, the website of the Nobel Prize in Stockholm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not shocked because I got a warning phone call, uh, which put me into shock. <laughs> You're the aftershock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud to be the aftershock. That's a nice idea. Um, so you, were you asleep when the call came? Yes, I was. Yeah, it was four, four forty-five, I think, in, in the, on the East Coast here. The phone rang, and he said, who the heck is calling? And they didn't answer it. And then about five minutes later, it rang again, and still didn't, still didn't answer it. And the third time, I got up angrily to answer it, <laughs> and it was Stockholm. It was, it was just a weird, weird experience. I imagine your anger subsided fairly fast. <laughs> it did, yeah. It uh, went away in about a second. It was replaced by the shock. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the first thing you did after hearing the news? I told my wife, you yeah. <laughs> know, woke well, her up. <laughs> so, uh, it's just, you know, it's so... Kind of otherworldly. It's it's something that you you don't think will ever happen, and you know, sometimes don't think you deserve it to happen, and then it happens. In, in, in this crazy COVID year, it just uh, where every, everything is turned upside down. This is another nice upside down for me. It's a very hopeful story of science. This the discovery and and then virtual eradication, at least in in many countries of uh, hepatitis C, it, um, I mean, it was decades of work, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, you know, it's a good story for kind of non-directed research uh, where I have a hypothesis, but you have no idea where it's going to go. Just looking to see what caused post-transfusion hepatitis and, and initiated, you know, a very, very, very long study that involved many people, and that was all done at NIH, and um, probably could not have been done anywhere else because it, it took so long to come up with something you didn't really expect to find. But it was it was decades, and, and a lot of people, Bob Purcell, and particularly. Uh, Paul Holland and Paul Schmidt, who, who were in the blood bank with me, but Bob Purcell was the, the very basic scientist. Uh, it's really a fifty-year story. <laughs> it's 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 a real detective story as well. I mean, it's it, it it's thrilling stuff, and you know these stories in a way need to be told to the next generation so that they too become virus hunters. Yeah, yeah. The the message. That I think is is important is that you, know, you don't always know where you're going. Nowadays, uh, research is so directed, and so has to come up with a drug fast. Uh, but in NIH, they allowed me to just go my way, <laughs> well, and uh, and so it paid off way beyond. You know, to to have a cure. To see the first case of what was officially called non a non b, uh, the first case, and then see these curative drugs and see so many people getting cured and nobody getting post transfusion hepatitis. That's that's like astounding. Um, it must be it must uh, be amazing yes, to see the direct effect of your of your work and the work of many others. Yes. Yeah, and it was, you know, nothing I have <laughs> thought would happen, really. Uh, uh, oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Many congratulations. It's, it's the best alarm clock I've ever had. Well, you should record it. and use, you, could, you should have recorded the call, and you could use it every day thereafter. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Art. Thank you. Look forward to speaking again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.